Today's video has no intro, so you can consider this part the intro if you like. Here we are just gonna jump straight to the problems. I noticed something strange and I'm not sure if it is a problem or what. On the grill of the Apollo Life I was driving, only three blocks are open for air intake, but on the other side of the VW badge they are blocked. So I went back to the previous Polo Life videos I recorded to investigate further and noted that in some of them the grill is open on both sides. What's interesting is that only the ones with IQ lights are open on both sides, whereas the ones without IQ lights are blocked on one side. I'm not sure if this is a design feature or something, so if you perhaps know why the cars are like this, please let us know in the comment section. So when it comes to like overall driving comfort, I think this car gets a 10 out of 10. And I like, I must say, I like these seats, man. These cloth seats are more comfortable than the leather seats. Yes, they look terrible and they get dirty easily, but they feel more comfortable to sit on. Like they are spongy and bouncy, whereas the ones which are leather, they are like kind of stiff and hard. Yes, this car is amazing and all, but I wouldn't recommend it for people with a tight budget particularly new drivers who just obtained their driver's license this year. For this car without any extras, you are looking at an installment of just over 7,000 rands when financed for 5 years at the current prime lending rate with 0% deposit. And for new inexperienced drivers, the insurance could be as high as 3,000 rands. So a high risk car plus a high risk inexperienced driver is just a great recipe for disaster. So today I got the chance to drive the Polo TSI Live, so I'm going to talk about how is it like to drive. Let's start with the engine. This car has a 1 litre turbocharged 3 cylinder engine with a power output of 70 kilowatts and 175 Nm of torque and the engine is mated to a 5 speed manual transmission. So with the previous Polo nomenclature, this would be the comfort line and it is only available in manual. If you opt for the 70 kilowatts variant, you can only get it with a 5-speed manual, no automatic transmission. If you want an automatic, you have to go for the Polo Life DSG, which is the 85 kilowatt variant, and with the old nomenclature, it would be the high line. So, how is it like on the road? driving this car you don't have to try to be a schmuck because the engine will make this loud annoying noise and you will get this vibration i don't know from where but in second gear especially in second gear when you put your foot down like put your foot down hard you will get this vibration somewhere and when you try to redline the car it feels like yakamega is nothing cleaner in English. So, one thing that I have to point out is that the engine just sounds annoyingly loud. I don't know, maybe I'm just used to the Polo GTI. That's why I feel like this car sounds terrible. But in first, from from first to third gear, when you put your foot down, it just sounds like horrible. It goes like, it's like it feels like being stepped in the ears. Just listen. irritating is the gear I I think they should have made it smooth I don't know maybe it's because the car is still new but there's some kind of friction when you change gears it doesn't glide smooth through the gears there's some friction yarn and funny friction yarn that I'm feeling currently there's obstruction it feels like you have to move the gear in a specific part in order to be able to engage the gear otherwise it feels like you've missed the gear and there's this like <laughs> friction Bukari, we are chowing a dry, <laughs> no, this is a bad example, but I think you get the point. I think the gear should have been smoother than it is right now, because now it feels like there's some obstruction yana here, and you must move it in like a specific way in order to engage the gear. Maybe when the car is now used to being driven, because now it only is at around 500 kilometers here, 
on the clock so it might be that the gear is still new all day. someone asked how is it like when you try to overtake and i can tell you now this car put down its power very impressive there's no table leg whatsoever when you just change down and put your foot on the gas the car moves so the average fuel consumption of this car is claimed to be 5.4 liters per 100 kilometers while on the gti is 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers but today when i was driving to work with this car i averaged around seven and i don't clock that with the gti when i drive the gti to work my fuel consumption is always less than six every every day i range between like 5.0 and like 5.8 liters per hundred kilometers so it is surprising that the two liter engine is more fuel efficient than the one liter engine in this one but here i kind of feel like the engine is overworking this one liter engine thing i don't think it's working maybe they should have put a 1.4 yana maybe i don't know it could have done it different but here i feel like the engine is struggling that's why it is making that annoying noise like when i'm in second gear like that and just listen to this noise so yeah i feel like the engine should have been made bigger with this one liter thing i've got the engine is struggling i haven't driven the preface lift polo tsi yet so i can't comment on how is it like compared to this one but this is a vw polo and it will remain a benchmark in the mid-size hatchback segment here in sa i think vw bought the recipe right with this car and it keeps on getting better and better with every generation because i remember when i was in high school people used to look down on the polo when you drive a polo and not taken serious but now having a polo is a symbol of wealth it's like pouring a full tank yo when you pour a full tank now we are nowadays we are, we are just showing off so back then when you drive a polo ah, it was even given all sorts of funny name maybe it's a namnya sebenza it's just a sign that you've just started working it was considered a low-end budget car but now 350,000 rands for a polo ah, we are rich ah, we are rich rich so at the time of making this video this car starts from 353,000 rand 600 without any options and it was launched in january actually it increased by 3600 since it launched in january in terms of warranty all vw vehicles come with a three year 120,000 kilometers warranty and this one also gets a three year 45,000 kilometers service plan. when it comes to space and practicality this car would be ideal for a couple with two and a half kids because honestly the middle seat here at the back is not that useful in my opinion but otherwise it is quite a spacious car in front the dashboard layout of the polo life is not too different from that of the polo gti the major difference is the steering wheel design aircon controls and the decorative dash trim this car has the discover media option and it has wireless charging and your phone can charge even if it has the silicone cover on. Next to the gear lever, we have the park distance control button, park assist button and the auto start stop button. The empty blocks are used for the traction control and driving mode selection button on the GTI. What am I missing? What am I missing? Oh yes, the factory sound system. The factory sound system is not bad in my opinion by factory sound standards. In fact, it sounds good, but it kind of sounds like it is not well balanced. But then again, the system features digital equalizers so you can set the sound to your own preference, but there's no subwoofer. You only get that with the Beats audio system. This car also has that sound positioning thing I demonstrated with the Beats audio in the GTI.
Now I think I've already said a lot about the interior and overall I think it is well put together besides the fact that it has the light roof upholstery which will get dirty easily. The GTI is stuck on top. I know it may sound like I am blowing my own trumpet right now but currently here in SA there is no one who dissects the new facelifted polo range the way I do. The content that I've covered so far is unmatched. I've covered almost everything from the base model polo TSI, TSI Live, DSG, R-Line all the way to the top of the range polo GTI. So I'm going to go to the top of the I call But as Pume in love. Now let's look at the financial aspect. The target market for this car is mainly young professionals who've just started working and more often than not they won't have a 10% 35,000 rand deposit for a base model Polo Life or 42,000 rands for a fully spec one. When fully spec, the Polo Life costs over 420,000 rands. For our calculations to be more realistic, let's assume on your car you'll opt for a sunroof for 14,000 rands and the nicer 16 inch max for 4,800 rands cause that's what most polo drivers love here in SA. So your car will cost 373,000 rands. If you finance a 373,000 rands car for five years at a current prime lending rate of 7.75% with no deposit and no balloon payment, your monthly installment will be 7,500. And the insurance will range between 1,000 and 3,000 rands. And for the purpose of this video, we can use a realistic average of 1,500. 7,500 plus 1,500 is 9,000 rands. And that's before we factor in the cost of fuel. So let's assume in a month you use two full tanks and that's 2,000 rands plus. So 9,000 plus 2,000 rands gives you a total of 11,000 rands. Kamo patela rent ya 4,000 for your apartment. Wabona huri salary nyana ya khao ya 20k ifedi. So if you earn 20 or even 25,000 rands a month, it is not wise to buy this car just because they told you that you qualify for the car loan. Because that's how you end up eating pap and eggs every day for 5 years. Or sometimes mix things up with tin fish if you decide to overstretch your budget. So if any salesperson tells you that they can negotiate a good deal for you so that you can pay 6,000 or less for the Polo Life for five years with no deposit. Tell them I said they should stop misleading people. One last part, you don't get the LED light strip which runs across the face of the car if you don't opt for IQ lights. And in my opinion, the car looks super nice with that thing. I'm not saying people should go for IQ lights. Just do with that information what you will. It's like having a hot girlfriend. Even if your girlfriend is not so hot, you still have a girlfriend, but it's always nicer to have the hot, hot one. In closing, the Apollo Life is a great mid-size hatchback, and if you have the money to buy it, by all means, go for it. In my next video, I'll be giving you guys an update about the software and hardware flops in our Apollo GTI. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in Mzanze context. This car moves from 0 to 100 in 10.8 seconds and the top speed is 187 kilometers per hour.